All right, okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Ashley Monique, owner of Ashley Jimmy Tummy. Um, this is a clip on, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this is episode two of I've the I've Noticed podcast, which is basically exactly what it is. I've noticed a lot of things, but um, as always, uh, go to my all my business pages. Uh, subscribe to the Ashley's Jimmy Tummy um YouTube page. Go to my Instagram Ashley Monique eight four three. Go to my uh Ashley's Jimmy Tummy Catering on Facebook. Now you can also go to the I've Noticed uh podcast page on Facebook and Ashley Jimmy Tummy dot com everywhere. But um. And we have a special guest, Whitney, Miss Whitney. Yeah. Hello. So I will also post her social media handle uh, wherever she would like for y'all to follow her if she chooses to. <laughs> Some weird people out here. And then, as always, we have Courtney. And we got Miss Kiki. All right, so we're going to go straight into this. Um, I don't know how long it's going to be because we have a, a guest host and I'm happy. I'm super happy she's here. And also, um, if anybody else is interested in coming up here, you know, um, sharing your opinions, you know, some thought provoked, you know, because we're not always correct. These are just our thoughts and our opinions on things, on certain topics. And, um, just inbox me or either one of the ladies, either Courtney or Kiki, and um, they'll let me know. But, okay, our first topic tonight is... And I'm excited. About to come in strong, Ashley, with this I one. know, I know, because I, 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 I've been wanting these questions. Listen, like, putting these <laughs> questions together is like doing a mixtape or an album. Like, if you like rap, if you like R&B, you like country, it's like, <laughs> I, I feel the pressure. I be feeling like, okay, no, this question need to, because we can transition into this, and it got to go smooth. Like, it's, it'd be that serious. Yeah. It, and it only yeah. be like three to four questions, but y'all don't understand. <laughs> y'all, y'all don't get it. But, uh, Courtney, I think this was your question. Um <laughs> I've had this debate literally on Facebook not too long ago and I keep seeing the same meme over and over again. I'm so okay. tired of it because it's so stupid. But yeah, that, that was my question. You worded it perfectly though. Yeah, I know when you had inboxed me about it, um, I was like, okay, I got to kind of... These people are so disrespectful. Okay. Um, all right. Okay, so the question is, can a black man be loved correctly, correctly without having financial stability? AKA hood wise, if he ain't got no money, uh, he ain't getting no honey. <laughs> like, like if he ain't got no money, like what you talking to me for? You know, which um is very interesting. Um, so who would like to, Courtney, would you like to, you know, do the honors or what about this question? Did it confuse you? Did it aggravate you? Like, what, what's your thoughts and opinions? It aggravated me because. Okay, so when I had this argument on Facebook not too long ago, like there was men on my post literally saying like, this ain't true, it's not possible, but we see it every day. <laughs> we see it every day. We see men who ain't nothing but drug dealers or, you know, not even drug dealers, like they just don't do <laughs> nothing, be sitting on the corner every freaking day, you know, not doing anything with their lives, regardless of potential and all that stuff like that. And women are in love and fighting over them because of baby mom drama and everything else like that. Like we see it every day. So to say that a black man can't be loved without being financially stable, I think is untrue for one. But I mean, we all have our limits, right? Okay, okay, wait a minute. Let me make sure I, I understand what you're saying. Let me follow you first. Okay, you're saying you don't believe that it's true. You you believe that. Okay. You lost me at the drug deal. <laughs> like, okay. You're saying because they because you see them get money and girls flock to them that you think that they are love. Is that what you're saying? I'm not saying that. I'm saying the ones that don't are not getting money. Like they're still finding relationships somehow. Yeah, like the people that are like the guys that are not financially stable. Like they don't really have um, steady income. They don't have. They're not going out here grinding every day. They're not right. thriving. They're not doing any of that. And they still are in relationships and they still yet even have women honestly taking care of them. Like you're not in a position to do anything, but yet you still have this woman who is like, you don't have the money for a date. She's going to pay for it. 
you can't go pick up your kids and spend time with them. So she's going to go pick up the kids and spend time with them. That's a woman loving you without you having financial stability, regardless of why she's doing it. I don't know. She probably sees the potential or maybe one day, you know, he'll get it right or whatever the case may be. We see it all the time where guys are in relationships with girls and the woman is the one that's, you know, out here grinding and, and getting to the money and all of that. And maybe when he gets on his feet, you know, then the roles may reverse and it's like, okay, now he's in a place to take care of her, but we see it all the time. So that question that I see on social media aggravates me a lot too, because it's like all of a sudden now, we men have standards. a problem. Yeah, yeah like, men have like, a problem I'm not with doing financial it. No, I'm not yeah. doing it. Now all of a sudden you have a problem with financial stability, but honestly speaking, like the guys that I know, the, the men that are able to provide financial stability, you don't hear them saying, oh, I won't be loved correctly because, you know, I got money or whatever the case may be. All the guys that I know, if they're able to provide financial stability, there's no question or anything of them saying, oh, this woman is going to use me for money. It's like, you know, you need in a relationship. I, I mean, I don't necessarily think in a relationship, but in a marriage, like you need money, regardless of your relationship or not, you need money to survive. So nobody wants to be out here struggling on their own but then if you're with somebody else like dang both of us can't be struggling <laughs> at all like that's what, like i have this big thing about i know because on the last episode courtney was like ashley you need to lower your but anyway <laughs> so I've, I've lowered my my list or whatever i was like just have a transportation like both of us can't be on a bike like and i say that you know trying to be funny but my thing is like uh the reason why it's important for you to have transportation because first off you're grown like you need to get to work but also just in case if i have i'm having car trouble i can call my man i shouldn't have to call whitney courtney keista i shouldn't have to call y'all especially because with me i have the type of attitude and mouth i'm like why are you calling me? why are you waking me up early and you laying there with a guy like your man is supposed to like there's just things that you're supposed to have but i totally agree I think Whitney, going back to what you were saying, um, like it's this new thing of why women are saying this now. When we know we got aunts, we got cousins, we got we got we know we got friends that take care of these guys that take care of these men and have been doing so. But I think where it comes from is this new rhetoric come from women that are more educated women that are like you said like the pro well mm -hmm. primary breadwinners like now they're like which they call it bougie or uppity you know you know the memes where you'd like the aunt with the, the fur and the shades on now like i think it's those women that are having these standards which ain't nothing kind of wrong with it but you no, know it's just wrong. i guess it's just like being being sick and tired like tired of being sick and tired like you know they're like oh i refuse uh, you're not driving you're not dropping me off at work like yeah. I think it's like those type of women like you don't have a car you're not using my car to drop me off at work and just ride around doing what you want to do all day even if it's it like you we did it for so long like you we've accepted struggle love for so long it's just like now we're at the point <laughs> like she, struggle love. <laughs> yeah you gotta like I think it's like almost like intimidating for some guys because like now when you put that put that standard on them it's like now you gotta level up like you, you've known for so long that women had to be so dependent on guys for, for financial stability. So like now that it's like, I can make it on my own. Like if you're coming and adding to me, like I need you to meet me at this level if we're going to go. I think like the guys may be a little threatened by that. It's like, dang, like, you know, I shouldn't have to level up or I shouldn't have to do all of that. You know, you should love me for me. And it's like Ooh, at the same time, okay. well, we need, <laughs> I need to go back and write that. We need to talk about that. That topic, love me for me. What is that? Yeah, right. and then it's just like at the same time for financial stability, like, yeah, you can be loved correctly, but don't get it twisted. Yeah, you can be loved correctly, but if you don't want anybody to have so much emphasis on your financial stability, then you have to be bringing something else to the table besides your money. Like, if that's all you have is your money, no, you are not going to be loved correctly. Like, right. you and have to have something else. That's the so. thing, I think. I think when you ask the question itself, I'm saying it is possible, but a lot of women have standards now. Well, not now have standards, but are... Yeah. Oh, they're serious not about it now. Not they're accepting serious. what we used to accept anymore. And I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, they, I mean, of course, people have their limits on how, you know, low on the financial scale you want to go. But I just think that women are being a lot smarter about it now. But it is possible. 
<laughs> it is possible for um to be loved without money. It's just not. We just choose not that. to have struggle love. We don't we and, don't have struggle love. And it's not like a certain amount. Like it's not like when people we say financial stability or want somebody with money, we're not saying like somebody has to have a whole wealth of money and has to like wine and dine and do all of these things. Right, right. But just being a financial a, a stable position where okay, we I want to go out on a date. You can take me out on a date. We want to go somewhere. We do something. You can do that. We're not in debt. We're not. We don't have debt, and we owe this person. You owe that person, and you're living paycheck to paycheck. You you know you gotta you know, stretch out a dollar for, you know, a long time. That's what we mean when we say financial stability, not that you have to have all of this money, but just being comfortable. Like you should want that for yourself. And when you get somebody else, you should want the same thing. Right. As, and let, let me tell you my quick experience. Listen, when I try to, I'm, I'm nowhere near a financial advisor. I've just been broke before. I'm in, listen, I, I like to do the little joke of where I was NBA young boy before NBA young boy. Like I'm never going broke again. I'm sorry. I'm not, it's not happening, you know? Yeah. But so when I meet guys and I'm like, Ooh, like I, I try to help them, you know? And I'm like, well, maybe you should save or do you have a 401k or maybe you, you should do this. And you know what I, the feedback that I get, I'll say six out of 10 will say, Oh, you, you, are you pocket watching? Like, I, why are you trying to tell me what to do with my money? I'm like, you know what? <laughs> this is crazy. Like, it's not like I'm asking you to buy me like a bag or some weave or something. I'm like, I'm literally, I get my hair and nails done. I'm literally saying like, maybe you should, or have you ever thought about, you know, so you won't have to work all the way until you're like 67 years old to get your social security early. Cause I don't want to see you in Walmart like that. You know, it's especially like people who you care about, but. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Pista, what about you? What do you, what do you think? Like, um, can you love a black man without him having financial stability? Um, you the, you're the $5 girl. <laughs> Remember what she's like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh that's, right. that's a side piece. <laughs> that's, that's for the side piece. But, um, uh, but listening to you guys though, and then also like reading the question myself and mm -hmm. like just sitting here thinking at the same time. So I gotta bring Michelle in just a tad. Okay. Just a little bit. So we gotta bring Michelle in. All right. So the thing about that is the they can be they can be loved right. Um, because it's depending. Are you financially um unstable? because you choose to be are you financially unstable because you're having to now walk a road that people don't believe it but there are people that walk a broke road uh for a purpose for a destiny um or are Give you an example point? um like do they quit their job because they have a passion or career like i want to be a rapper <laughs> i want to be a rapper i got to go in the studio i got to do this mixtape like this is my passion, no. this is my dream. When I say purpose, when I say purpose and destiny, I mean spiritual wise. Okay. You have you have people that go through many different things, people that have been homeless that are now no longer homeless. But a lot of times we go through stuff at the same time so we can appreciate what we're gonna get. So it all works hand in hand and it's all depending on how or if you're willing to understand. Um, because there's a difference in between a guy that want to sit home and be taken care of and a guy that is sitting home and trying to make it and trying to do. So it's just knowing the difference. It's just knowing what you have, who you have, because see, a lot of times people don't think about this either. If they're, if it, if they're going through the struggle right now, to get where Michelle, you know, bring Michelle in where God wants them to be, you sticking with them gets you a reward too. So that's why you, you kind of have to be careful how you pick and choose it. Because now me personally, I have nothing against a, a guy that want to be a stay at home dad and the woman want to go to work and do it. Like I have nothing against that. As long as you are doing what you would expect the woman to do if she was a stay-at-home mom like you can't just be there like you gotta 
you got to do the works too. You you got to cook. You got to clean. You got to make sure the kids straight and stuff like that. I mean, I may help you because I know it could be tiring or it could be a lot. But um, but at the same time, it is possible. I really believe it is possible. You just got to know the difference. You got to know who you're working with, who you got, where they standing at, if they trying or if they just right. they want to be like an ex of mine and quit their job and and I tell you, no, I can't pay nothing. Well, I, well, I think that should be a conversation. Okay, let, okay. What you oh, said is like two different things. Like that sounds like you're already in a relationship with somebody and then y'all make the decision. Y'all sit down together and have that discussion. Like, okay, well, I make more money. And so you're going to stay home and do that. But I think, so Courtney, is it going into a relationship, like a brand new relationship or a situation where you know he doesn't have a job or you know he's like, minimum wage okay so that's what i was about to ask kisa i wanted to know her opinion okay. on it. But, um for me i do have a a limit like there has to be okay so everyone goes through hard times everyone you know some people start out on a struggle you know it's hard to get to where they want to be blah 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 i do have a limit i need a legitimate reason of why you are where you're at i know we sprinkled this like on the group chat when we were talking about when we when i first brought it up right like, you could be working from pay to pay, you know, paycheck to paycheck and maybe staying with your mama, but I need a legitimate reason. Like I'm in school, so I'm doing this to do, you know, like I need a legitimate reason of why I need to see someone actively building towards where they want to go. Because that then that shows me that this person has ambition. This person is actually trying to do something with their life. And that's the type of person that I want to be with, but I need to have a legitimate reason. But if you just if you just, you know, doing the living the paycheck to paycheck, but you're not, you know, you're not actively trying to better your own life to do something better for you, I, I, I wouldn't be with that. I couldn't do that. And then you know what they consider that? They call that money hungry, a gold digger. And I'm like, how in the world? If I was a girl, is, so I'm gonna be the time me to, to keep us in the corner. Oh, she a gold digger. So now you don't want to be a, you don't want to be seen as a gold digger. So now you can't mention nothing about money and wanting financial stability because oh my gosh, they're gonna think I'm a gold digger if I say something about money. Right. I'm created by men. Like who who does that? Like Listen, like that they just try not. to put it off like money is not important. Like yes, money is not everything, but of course you need money to survive. Like things cost. You start trying to have kids, kids, you know, you have to provide these things for them. So it's just like the same thing kind of all in together. It's just like, we're not saying you have to have a whole bunch of money, but if you, you can be loved correctly, even from what Kisa was saying, even about like just being able to try or you're ambitious, like you're bringing something else to the table. Yeah, I may not be where I want to, where he wants to be, um, you know, with his finances or where you want him to be with his finances. But if you see that he's trying, you see that he's getting up every day, working towards whatever his goal is, whether that's something he has a passion in or if he's going out applying for jobs, if he doesn't have work, you see him going out applying for jobs or doing whatever he needs to do, then that's something that you're bringing to the table outside of that. Cause you know somebody, you have somebody who's ambitious, who's gonna keep trying, who's gonna be supportive of you. Like if you're the breadwinner and you know, like Keith was mentioned, like if that the woman is out and she's working, you're gonna make sure that when she comes home, you know, maybe you already have dinner cooked or maybe you, um, you know, have run a bath or whatever the case may be. You're bringing something else because you may be lacking in one area. And I think that goes for women too, or, you know, whatever area you're lacking in, you try to make up for it in other areas. So it just creates balance. Yeah. Well, I would really like to talk to a stay at home dad. <laughs> like if anybody watching, like if your dad, your uncle or somebody, you know, like <laughs> I would really love to like talk to a stay at home yeah, That would be good. Yeah, like how did you transition yeah. to that? Like, because I'm not gonna lie, I don't feel that way now, but maybe like a couple years ago, I considered that. Like, I was like, I make a good bit of money. I was like, I, I would, uh, I thought that's what I wanted, I would consider because of the guys that I was talking to. Like, it wasn't, I don't know, I don't know why you be keeping booking into rappers or I just. <laughs> That girl right there. But listen, I have a question for Courtney right quick, though. Because, you, Courtney, you said um, as far as, like, there has to be a reason, right? A legitimate reason? Okay. So then let me ask you this question. Um, what if there is no explanation? That's not acceptable. So, no, wait, 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 wait now. 
what if there is no explanation? The reason why I say that, the reason why I say that, okay, if you have this man that he is trying, he done put in 50 applications, all of them got turned down, he done went out, he do side hustles, this here, this there, but he cannot explain to you why nothing will happen for him. Is that still unacceptable? That's, I don't, there, there's, there has to be more to it because that, that would have to be an explanation. Like I'm trying to find a job, but I can't find one. That would be the explanation. Because I could interject it on Courtney's behalf. Uh, first <laughs> off, um, I want now, now see, this is where he's probably going to get upset with me about because now I want to see, well, what are you applying for? Because if you, are you applying for jobs that you're not qualified for? Like, are you, yeah. you know, that's what I'm, because I've, due to COVID, I've been unemployed, so I've read the description, and where I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna do that, and then they be like, they'll let you know you're not qualified for this, you know, so if you're putting in 50 applications, and you're still not getting it, and then let's say you, he is applying for the jobs that he, like, basic, like, uh, high school diploma, GED, or whatever, and two years of customer service, okay, let's say he has that, but then I would go with, let's do a mock interview, like, it's something with his interview skills where he's getting his foot in the door. He's still not application. He's going to the interview, but there's something still not there. So I think Keith, what it boils down to is if he's willing to ex accept, if he's willing to accept me uh, paying all these bills and making sure the roof is over our heads and stuff, hopefully the man, because you know, they have a lot of pride and everything and ego. Hopefully he's willing to accept my help. It's like, well, babe, let me, let's, 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 what's what's going on like let's do the mock interviewer then that's when i have to call you up and he has to go to church with you and that matters too like because like like she was saying there's not a reason he's doing the applications and stuff well if he's you know telling me exactly what's going on like i don't have good interview skills for some reason every time i right. get my foot in the door i get shut back out like I that's a, like I need a legitimate there has to be a reason of why you're not working so I don't see like if like if I ask like I'm like so what do you do for your living they're like well I'm a I'm in between jobs now and then I, my follow-up question would be like, okay well what did you do the last time you had a job when was that and if they're like that was three years ago I need more than just I'm just yeah. in between jobs <laughs> and it go okay. it goes back it connects to something so mm -hmm. just like with me with my students so I work in higher education at a college and I help students get internships and you know the students will be like you know I've been applying for these internships and I've been getting calls back and I've been to interviews but they just haven't called me back I keep going and I, you know I'm, I'm applying and I'm getting interviews but they just not selecting me and it's like of course you sent your resume so obviously you're qualified it's something that you're doing in an interview that's not coming over well to say like, hey, I'm qualified. So then you have to go back and do mock interviews with them because it's something, there's no, it it, it just can't be like you're applying for 50 jobs or a whole bunch of jobs and nothing comes available. And if that is the case, then you have to go back and assess like, okay, I'm applying. What am I, am I filling out the application correctly? Because a lot of times it's that, you know, they're not filling out the application correctly. Or like yeah. Ashley said, they're applying for jobs that they're not qualified for. for. You know, so it's it's okay. I think it's it's working with the person as well. So it's not just okay them telling you, okay, yeah, I'm applying for jobs, but it's it's helping, not just saying, oh, I expect for you to get a job. You need to have yeah. a job by next week. You know, you're working with them at the same time. Okay, you apply for the jobs. How can I help and assist? You need me to look over your resume. Maybe if it's not even a resume thing, you need me to call somebody to connect. I know my family member X Y Z working well then and maybe they can you know get you in or something right. like that so it's always about like working with the person not just them on their own doing everything and right. they've got to be the that man that black man has to be willing to do that and i and i already know you know we kind of have a little sass sometimes sass and you know so i would try to be very like black women who are watching this i will try to be in this may be your situation or you may bump into this but be very gentle with your words when you're talking to him because he's already feeling down he's already right. feeling down please don't belittle him you know do something nice extra for him you know um because he's gonna need it you know but um but yeah just just let him know that you're working with him and not against him, you know, and you yeah, want that's, to. That's where communication comes in. Right, you right, know? right. You have to, 
I think the I think the reason of why is what would make me go to the next level and keep seeing the person. I need a legitimate reason why. And then once you get past that, like, okay, I accept the reason why, let's work on it, and then we can work on, you know, being a better us or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Hey y'all, some people in the comments are trying to um chime in about some things. Okay. I saw one guy put a comment and somebody said they had a lot to say. And we do want, I mean, we don't have a male on here at the moment, but I mean, of course we want to hear a male's perspective. I, 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 so. I see that J Dick. I I drop it. I mean, we gotta have a cut. This is we're all women on here talking. So this is this is us talking of us being in like come on, come up here, black men. Like, like so you, you have yourself. a different perspective. Yes, say that. Yes, say that. You know, okay. let us let us know. I'll right. read, it, um, it would be real nice for uh, it would be real nice if one of them would come up here. But I, like you said, Ashley, we get a <laughs> bunch of comments and stuff, or like mm-hmm. somebody mm-hmm. say something to me afterwards, and I'd be like, "Why not come up here?" And they'd be like, "No." <laughs> no, and I'm like, what are you scared of? What are you afraid of? Like, we really want to know from your side. Like, it, regardless of how I go, and regardless, Michelle, what the Lord has taught me about guys and women, what He with Adam and Eve, or whatever the case may be, it still is not the same from hearing from an actual guy. It's right, right, right. it's just not the same. So I be I try. They be saying something, and I'm yeah. like, well, get up here. But. Somebody said y'all act like y'all hiring the man. He should have a whole cover letter and resume just to say hello. No, that I think what we were saying when we were mentioning about the cover letter, we didn't even say cover letter, but <laughs> resume, if if that's the aspect of applying for a job, like of course, you know, you can get jobs without sending in a resume. You can work through connections. Like I mentioned before, somebody knows somebody, that's usually how it goes if, you know, you're yeah, not finding work. It's not about what you know, it's about who you know. The yeah, stuff. who you know. So it's just like, if you're reaching out, you're helping that person, not just <laughs> a, applying, because a, a lot of things is not, you know, literally sitting down, filling out applications. A lot of the things are online and believe it or not, some people have a hard time navigating on technology in order to do those things or they get aggravated by it and they don't even want to fill out the application. So it's not just that, working with connections, there's a lot of other things that you can do, like investments, people want to start their business, and you know, maybe they don't, just don't want to do the nine to five thing, they want to do their business for themselves. So that may take, whether they working with somebody else, taking a class or whatever the case may be, it's so many other things out there. So it's not just, you know, filling out an application. I, I want to, I okay, Ken Campbell, okay, I don't, I'm not sure who, who he's connected to, but I want to acknowledge what he's saying. Um, I think you read it correctly. He was like, y'all act like hiring men. He should have a whole cover letter and resume just to say hello. I think what he's referring to, and he can uh, verify what I'm saying. I think he's referring to like, uh, just talking to us women, people. Oh, gotcha. Now, okay. I'm, the reason why I'm touching on that is because like I said, I'm in my dating things. And guess what? He right. And I don't, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be one of those women say, no, no, no. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely <laughs> correct. And I, I, I said, I have said this to, to guys that I'm uh, conversing with, um, cause I converse with, talk to them with a purpose. I said, um, cause I, I take things slow. You know, I say, um, this is an interview. I, so when he say that, like, yeah, it is. I'm like, this is an interview, which is the, Hey, how you doing? What's your name? Um, I don't care about your favorite color. I don't, I, I do care about what type of foods you like. So I can like, we can, when I schedule, when it's my turn to do a date, you know, but um, I, the thing, the things that I do ask up front is the help can out is, uh, are you married? Are you single? Are you black people divorced? How many kids you got? How many baby? So yep, bam, 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 bam. Yep. So and that, I mean, that helps me out. Part, part, part. About how far I want to go with you. Especially yeah. when you first meet somebody and you start talking, those are the questions that you start asking. Like on the first date, what do you do? Oh, okay. What are your hours like? Do you work all the time? Like you ask those yes. questions. That's and, not and, like you act like we're asking for that just for people to approach us. You can approach me. But once we start getting in the conversation, I'm going to want to know more about you. I need to know who I'm talking yeah, to. Because it's our life. It's our lives. It's my life. You can't get mad about what I choose for myself. If anything, if you're saying, well, I could be good for you, Ashley, but you just so this, 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 like, okay, well then you be that person to come along and help me to not be this, 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 help me relax, like enhance what you see I'm lacking, help me and enhance that, you know, but I'm asking, we ask guys these questions because 
we don't want to waste our time. Like you have no idea how many guys that done wasted our time before we even got here. You know, before you even try to turn in your resume to say, hello, how you doing? Like, you don't know what done happened, what we done been through. And then y'all love to say, which this is going to be a topic. Everybody ain't like that. Every man ain't like that. Well, then go talk to your brothers. Talk to your brothers. Talk to your homeboys. Talk to your friends. Like, talk to all these other Black men who are doing us wrong. Yeah. And I think it's also, it's just like always, you know, I noticed that it's always like a, when, when when they say, you know, they're not loved correctly, it's always like, I'm bringing you just me, how I am, take it or leave it. And then it's like, when the, the women, I don't think we have the privilege of just saying like, it's just me, take it or leave it. Here's my, here's the way that I act. I don't like, they say they, you know, when they get mad when women say they don't want a broke man, but a man don't want a broke woman either. If a woman- I, Oh, I was gonna get not, that. If, they, if they're not stable on their feet, you know, when they think about their mate, you know, I need somebody that's out here grinding like me. I need somebody that's doing X, Y, Z. You know, it's the same way. So it's just like the man doesn't want a woman that that doesn't have anything going for herself. You know, oh, you know, she got this many kids and all this other stuff. You know, if she is lacking or she is not at a certain level, you know, they don't want to talk to her. Or, you know, if she if she um had a, a promiscuous past and slept with this person, this person, you know, it's a problem. But if they, it's like, oh, you know, I put that all behind me now, you know, I'm just with this one right. girl. And it's all fine. Right. It's, it's just, it's just realizing like the same thing. That it's a double standard. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it, it, you have to be able to provide uh, reciprocity. Like you have to be able to reciprocate these things that you're asking for. Like it's not just the women. I mean, I don't know about anybody else, but the women that I see that saying, okay, I just want you to have this. I just want you to have that. It's like they're asking for the things that they can provide too. Yes. So. Yeah. And oh, oh my God. Most it's, of it's to the fact that we're like now, it's so bad. It's gotten so bad that, and I, I think I might need to work on this. Look, black men, y'all let me know. It's gotten so bad to the, financially with guys that I say, look, I'll just pay for my own food. What do they call it? Dutch? Like, I'll just pay for what I do. You pay for what you do. And so with some guys who, I guess, struggling financially or whatever, they were, oh, okay. But then I meet, and I hate, I know you're going to hate this, real men. <laughs> when I meet, when I move into real men, they be like, oh, no, they take that as an insult, like disrespectfully, like you disrespecting them, you know. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's. On the day, I always assume that I'm paying for my own food. I just that. I mean, I, I now I, I do have that habit. I just don't have time to be like looking at you. Like when the bill come, I don't. Yeah. I don't like that awkward moment where you're just like staring at the receipt. That's gonna make me too uncomfortable. I'll just pull my car and be like, so I had the salmon and the. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, so that's like get real awkward. Yeah, <laughs> I, I can't handle it. Right, right. I um, but a lot of women, I don't know. That's that that whole, cause that is that that's a meme as well. Like that um, don't order what you can't afford to pay for. Or don't you know order what you wouldn't normally do if you was by yourself or whatever. Or you know, but okay. So, what's the unanimous like decision? Can a black man be loved without money? Like he stuck? Yes or no? Whitney. Yes. Courtney. Absolutely. My answer is yes. Of course he can because we've seen it. We got family members, but I would prefer you to take that over there, you know, until you get yourself. Yeah. I personally I feel like you shouldn't even be dating until you got everything situated, you know. But all right, so we're gonna go into the second question, which is um, if you could if you couldn't get along with your boyfriend's family or kids, let's go with kids. So we're together. Are we speaking specifically kids or the I, family? I, I'm, okay, well, let's do let's do an A and B. Like I want to say kids because mostly everybody got kids now. But let's say you could not get along with those demon children. Would that be? Is that a big enough factor for you to sit down with him and be like, you know what? I just this ain't gonna. I mean, so it can be kids or it could be his family. But I, I kind of want to do kids. Because they are, uh, because I, the reason why I want to say kids is because typically when it's a family, 
if I would ask y'all this question, say his family, his sister, his mom, y'all be like, I don't care. I'm dating him. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> if I say his kids, that's something that you got to be like, hmm. yeah. You know, so kids, we're going to go with kids. Hey, retard. Okay, so um, I'm, I'm going to answer that first. Okay. okay. So it all depends for me. It all depends. Um, first of all, I'm not even going to try to make you choose between me and your kids. That, that's what I'm not going to do because I don't want nobody to make me try to choose between me and my kids. Um, and the thing is, I like kids sometimes <laughs> they have this thing that they act the way they act because they act the way they act um, for the simple fact of they might not, you know, they may, you know, depending on the age, they're upset that their mom and dad isn't together. Yeah. Or, yeah. you yeah. know, so they're, they they kind of be acting out. If you can tell that they're acting out or whatever, then in that kind of case, I probably would like try to stick it through, uh, meet, you know, just sit down and talk to both of them, the, the kids and the father and uh, and go from there. But if they are the type of kids that they're just doing this to do this and he don't want to correct them and he don't want to um, straighten them out or anything like that, then personally, I would leave for the simple fact of I don't want you to choose. I don't want you to feel like you're stuck in between a rock and a hard place with your children. Right. Let your children do, but I'm going to have to let you know they're going to run off of plenty of people if you don't straighten it out. Like, you have to let them know, like, boom, like, Yep, that ain't gonna stay single always and me and me and your mom not getting back together so you know you're gonna have to straighten yourself up it it doesn't mean that you treat them different it doesn't mean that you do or however it, it may be wrong towards them but he need he you know he would need to let them know so yeah so if they're acting out and i know they're acting out and stuff I can't deal with Khaled. I'm not looking at her. So, all I know is that she. <laughs> she I'm not here laughing. Look who's talking. Look who's talking with my son. I'm. I'm dying. Look who's talking though, and she got my son. So. <laughs> so, <laughs> so but yeah, but that's that would be my thing. If they just acting out, and I know they're just acting out because they're a little upset, they're not understanding. Um and all that stuff, then I would say. But if they're not acting out and they just doing this to do this because they know they're the kids and they could get away with it and the dad ain't trying to straighten it out, I'm out. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's too, like, I feel like it's a, a difference between, you know, whether the person doesn't like your kid or the kid doesn't like them or they can't get along. Because yeah. it could be, like she mentioned, it could be some other issues in there that's contributing to why they're not getting along. Like she said, they may, the kid may still be holding on to hopes that the parents are going to get back together. They may feel like this other woman is coming in and kind of going to like take their place or whatever the case may be. So it, it depends on if they're, if the person is trying to get along or the person just don't like the kid. Like, you know, I don't think I could be with somebody who doesn't, if I had kids and I was, you know, dating somebody or seriously I should say seriously dating somebody because I don't feel like you should be you know bringing a person around your kids if you're not seriously you know you know thinking about being with them long term but you know if you're seriously thinking about pursuing a relationship with somebody and eventually getting married then I think it's definitely necessary for your kids and the person to get along because you're both gonna they're both gonna be in your lives and in each other's lives so it's not just about oh, well, if you don't like my kid, then, you know, that's just it. Because it, it, if you if you really want this person in your life, then you're going to try to to mend it, you know, however way you can, whether that's having a conversation for both sides, not just defending your kid, but also like letting your kid know like, hey, this is the person that I want to be in my life. Like, this is what we need to, to get along or to make everything, you know, all peaches and cream, you know, that I just feel like that that conversation needs to be had. But you know, I think that's kind of part of the reason why sometimes, you know, people will say, you know, I don't want to date somebody with kids because that's another element that you have to add on top of, you know, getting to know this person, you know, family and all, of, uh, all those other things, you know, kids are a little bit more personal. So I think that's a lot of the times why people say, you know, I don't want to 
date anybody that has kids because now you have to run the risk. Okay, what if the kids don't like me and it's going to create issues and things like that. So, you know, but, you know, of course, like I mentioned before, it's like it's running a risk because the, the longer you wait to date and the older that we're getting, the highly the possibility that you're going to run into somebody who already has a kid, who's probably already been married, who's, you know, already done some of those things. So it's like now you have to just figure out a way to navigate those things like the older you get. That's absolutely true because we had a topic about that, which I, I had to redo it and say, like you said, Whitney, you'd be like, oh, I just prefer not to date with kids, date guys with kids. But now mm-hmm. the older you are, now you're like, now we got limits on kids. Like, okay, I can do two. <laughs> I can do two kids, one baby mother. And then you'd be like, oh, well, I can do three kids, two yeah. babies. But now it's like a math equation. Like it's, ugh, it's just, it's hard out here. <laughs> it's hard. I think with family, it, I need to know the reason why. <laughs> like, why don't they like me? That that would determine. Courtney, <laughs> Courtney you always want to know the reason why. I know you don't know why. I'm always the why person. I just yeah. need to know the reason why. Like, literally, that would determine if I could deal with it. Why don't you like me? Do you not like me because you just don't like? Because, you know, some people just, I don't like your vibe, you know? <laughs> like, if that's the case, then maybe I'll probably ignore it. If they chose to ignore it, I'd probably ignore it. But if there was like a legitimate reason, sure, we could just end this because I don't want to deal with that. With kids, if I can't get along with the kids, it's not happening. Right. Um, and you can always tell when a kid is kind of acting out just because they don't like the idea of it because usually they do that right off the bat. Well, I mean, automatically, you know, like what he used to say in court, I mean, Whitney said, they want their parents together. That's why I don't believe, I I, I think we touched on, I don't believe parents should stay together just for the kids. Like that's not, that's so unrealistic. Like, I feel like if anything, if y'all can't like really get along, like it's really like hell in that house, you're doing more damage to the child than anything, you know? Cause I actually, when I was in college, I dated a guy, Charles, I dated a guy where his parents broke up like when he was like 20 and he was I was like, boy, if you don't get up, like, what is wrong with you? He was hurt. So the point that I'm getting at is it don't matter if they 12 or 20, they're going to be devastated regardless. So don't hinder yourself and your love life, you know, for the kids and stuff. But um, somebody said, what if the kids? They said, what if kids don't like none of the dudes you date? A lot of these kids need therapy. That's and true. I agree. They, they do, especially like when we were talking about them acting out. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, it's like they putting it off on, you know, oh, I don't like this person, but they could be dealing with um, different feelings of abandonment. They could be dealing with stuff that that may have happened to them or feelings that they're feeling and they don't know how to express them. And it's just coming out a different way. So that's definitely true. You know, it could be, you know, they do need therapy or, you know, they have other issues going on and they're just putting it off on, oh, I just don't like this person around. It could be something else that they're dealing with too. So it most de- you, you use the great word abandonment. It most definitely low key is that because you got to think about it. Even with friendships, you either you've either done it or you've had it done to you, which is when your friend or when you get into a new situation or relationship. That's your, like Courtney said, the honeymoon phase. So everything's all good. You want to be around that person. And so even with the kids, because you don't want to bring them around your kids because you need to get to know them more, but you're dating them. You like them, you, you, you know, so you're spending more time with them. So the kid is like, where is mama going? Like, why are we getting dropped off at grandma's house all the time? So they're already <laughs> like low key, like jealous or like, I don't like whoever it is, you know? Um, but uh, I don't know. I, I think I'm built a little different. Like automatically, I'm kind of like with Khaled, like with the bump them kids, you know. But now that I'm a little more older and more mature, I will, I don't know, I'm low-key like a therapist now. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> like, are you okay? But see, I I want to get in good with kids. And I'm not like a briber, but I just know like what kids like. Like, First off, I'm like, um, when it's time to introduce me to the kids, we're going to the skating rink. Like, it's not going to be no boring stuff. Like, let's go to an amusement park. Let's go to a skating yeah. rink. Let's, um, like, parties. Like, you know, I do festivals. Let's go to a festival. Let's, so automatically, I'm going to, I already know how to get in good with the kids. We got to be fun. It got to be fun. Hey, I'm actually possibly your stepmom, you know. 
but uh <laughs> you are like you can't go in with like guns blazing like oh you need to clean up your room oh you ain't gonna be doing this around me like that's i think that's a lot of the problem where you already want want to lay down like ground rules especially like people bold. that already have kids huh I think that's really bold if somebody goes into that. Type but of people situation. do that. Just, you got to think, I, I'm talking, I've talked to guys that had kids, right? And because everybody got kids. But uh, I've asked the questions of where, and they usually date women with kids. And so I'm like a unicorn to them. I'm 35 with no kids. I'm 34 with no kids. 30, you know, so I'm a unicorn. You know, so I've always asked them like past questions. I'd be like, so how is it with women that do have kids? Like, how do y'all like, is it really like a blended family? Like how the internet says it is? And he's like, most of the time, no, because single moms, like single black moms already have to carry on so many titles. Like they're already super women. So when they meet a man with kids and their kids are like unruly or don't really have any structure, you know, black moms do come and be like, oh, you ain't going to be doing this at my house. And even when they go to his house and the kids are there for the weekend or, you know, those visits and stuff, they still want to lay down the law. Like, they still want to be like, oh, no, you, you got to do this. Like, you ain't got no chores. Like, why you sitting up here and I'll go outside? Go, you know, yeah. you can't do that to other people's kids. You, you got to. Yeah, nah, I, I definitely agree with that. And I feel like when even when you do have blended fam families like this, I was watching, I don't know, it was something um, that was highlighting Black love, but I think it may have been on BET and Remy Ma and Pat Poos were on there. And um, I think he, I think he has a kid. He does. He has like two kids prior. Yeah. And uh, she was talking about, you know, their dynamics uh, as a family. And uh, she brought up some really good points. And I feel like, you know, when you're with somebody and they have kids, like at the end of the, at the end of the day, like you're not their parent. The other person is their parent. So I just feel like there's certain things that shouldn't come from you. Like, even if y'all are together, I just feel like it when it comes to discipline. When it comes to yeah, when it comes to discipline or certain things, it should be the actual parent handling that, you know. Or even when issues come up, that should be something for that parent and the mom to handle. That might that might be something that you shouldn't even have your hands in because at the end of the day, that those are uh, are the child's parents. And although that you may be in some capacity, um, you know, providing for them, or they may be coming to a house that you and that guy shares, you know, some things should be left as when it comes to parenting, it should be left up to the actual parent. So I think there's just like definitely some boundaries there um, that shouldn't be crossed. You know, some things is, is just for the parent. And as much as you want to be the person that's coming in all the time and maybe laying down a lot, I feel like, you know, certain instances, you know, if you have that type of relationship, of course, it's going to be different. But, you know, when it, I just feel like when it comes to that, it's, it, it's just best to let the parent do that. And I feel like sometimes when you do have an issue, it should come from that parent and not you because you're going to be seen as this, you know, hard to get along with stepmom right, and you can't right. do this, you can't do that. So, yeah, I, yeah. I agree. I, I agree with that. Um, and the, when you saw that, I, I saw that episode as well. Um, but I recently was, I recently saw something on YouTube like this. Um, he's a, 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 a image consultant. And mm. so his clientele is like, he, he called them high value men, like um, black men are men, period, typically mm -hmm. black, that are that make over a hundred thousand per year. Um, that's his clientele, and so like um, women, the type of women that they want are like women that don't mind like being like stay at home moms and stuff like that. But they got to be like drop dead gorgeous, you know, like they just got to be like up there. So like as far as like how we're like, oh, I want to get my education. Da, da, da. They don't give a damn about that. But the thing about that, what he was saying is, because I, I listen to him a lot, but he says that the reason those type of men, even though women want those type of men, those six-figure men, they don't like women or they don't want women with children. And the reason why is because of what you were saying, Whitney, mm -hmm. which is, you want me to take your hand in marriage. You want me to help, you know, be this provider, this protector and everything. And you're bringing your children along. It doesn't matter one or five, but, and you want to be in the house. You want to, you know, you take care of everything, but I can't discipline the child as though they're mine, you know? So you're telling me that because they're biologically yours, but legally I'm helping take care of them. They're mine legally, you know? 
you got to go outside the home to their biological father for them to be disciplined. Y'all got to co-parent together. And so he was saying that like a lot of men who seek him for, um, you know, relationship help and image consulting right. stuff and whatever, he was like, they don't want women, they don't want women with children because of that very issue. Because women, black women do not want, and he said, this is specific, he's like, they do not want that man to discipline their children. They don't want them, hey, sit down, hey, go to your room, hey, punishment, yeah. hey, no football, hey, no. No, 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 I'll do no, don't talk to my child like And then he said they clash. He's like, they don't even get to the 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 uh engagement or the proposed phases because of the, the children, like because they can't get on the same level as children. And he actually does have um people call in on his show and he always asks him, he's like, Can that man that you want, you desire, that you need, can he discipline your child? And everybody says no. Every black woman says, do not, don't talk to my child, don't touch my child, don't, that's my baby. And I was yeah. like, and so it got me thinking, I'm like, are we, are, are we doing this right? Like, are, aren't we, because you want the man, your husband to do everything else for you, the, the, go, to live by this Bible and all this, you know, but he can't discipline the child. Yeah. And I, I think it's just, all, I think it all just depends on what type of relationship that you have with the kids. And I think that's another reason why it's so important to actually date the person, which I, I hope we get on the topic like this um, of what dating actually is. Like, what, what does it mean to date? Like, for, from a guy's perspective and a woman's perspective, like, when you're dating somebody, what does that look like for you? Because it's not just, oh, we're going on dates, hanging out, and, you know, now I feel like we've been hanging out for a certain amount of months and you know I know you have kids so now it's time for me to meet your kids like you actually have to date the person and figure out like you know what's going on in their lives like what do they have going on what are their struggles what are their what are the things that they're trying to accomplish what things are, are challenging them like how do you come in and and fit into their world or how do you help them elevate so that's what dating is entails all of that so like even when you get down to meeting the kids it shouldn't be like you're meeting the kids and you don't know anything about them you should know oh um you know I don't know like you Chloe they, like, yeah Chloe likes this and so like when you meet them it should be almost like you're meeting somebody that you already kind of familiar with not that you're meeting them blind eye absolutely. and the same thing you know goes for the kids it shouldn't be like your kids is just finally meeting Whitney and, you know, all they know is your name, you should have already, even though you, you're not, you know, actually letting your kids meet the person that you may be dating, you should already be having them become familiar with the person. Like, they Absolutely. know their name, and they know something about them. So it's not so awkward, or it's not so challenging when you're having to kind of form that relationship with the children. It shouldn't be like your first encounter. It should be the first time they've ever seen you, know anything about you. Like, they should know some things about you because that's some, certain things that you're giving to them as you're dating that person. Ideally, that's how you want it to go, but I done heard some stories about, like, <laughs> I knew we had kids, but I didn't know I was going to meet them today. Like, <laughs> or the kids don't know nothing about it. They're like, this is my new friend, and what about your family? Yeah, they <laughs> always introduce you, to, like, like, this is, uh, oh, hey, Miss Whitney, hey, Miss Courtney, you know, like, they always, like, but you know what? It's so weird because I don't, I prefer kids that's like teenage because that means that they don't have that long to be there. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, but I'm so serious. Yeah, um, you know, I mean, yeah, but, but I, I guess it all boils down to like well-mannered children. And if they're, mm -hmm. teenage, you know, like if they're like super cute and like well-mannered, then it's, it wouldn't be hard for me to like transition into that blended family thing, you know, um, Super cute. What? <laughs> I need it. I need it. Cause you're not gonna be like snag a tooth, have an attitude, and then like just grown as like now nah, I'm gonna have to be like Kalea. You're gonna have to just get um matter of fact, you're not gonna get locked out of the house. I'll just leave. You know, like I just can't do it, you know. But cute listen, I'm sorry. Hashtag cute kids matter. I'm sorry. Like when the kid is just like bad, Courtney, I'm sorry, I listen. <laughs> Cute kids matter. But, but a kid being bad doesn't mean you can't personally get along with them. They just might be bad in general. Okay, and that's my that's the Lord speaking to me. Like, <laughs> he know I can't do this. Like, 
Now, what do y'all think about a timeline? Somebody asked, what is the timeline that you would probably say? Like, if you're dating somebody and, you know, things are going well, you know, you're getting to know each other and, you know, the other person has kids, like, what would be the timeline that you would say, okay, I think it's, you know, about time for my kids to meet this, you know, meet my, this person to meet my kids. What, what time frame is, is there a time frame? It because is a time frame. On, a other, on another episode, and I think my answer still stands the same. It has to be at a point where we both know that this is actually going somewhere mm-hmm. instead of just the beginning phase and that you don't expect me to be gone in the next three months. Like this isn't a, a temporary occasional we meet up type of thing. Like this is actually going somewhere. We're building towards something. That's when I would want to meet your kids because then I'm meeting your kids to be introduced as family. You know what I mean? So but that doesn't necessarily, I mean, it doesn't have to take a year for that to happen. Right. It, it's just, so a, I can't put a time frame on, but it just has to be at that point to where we know this is, that there's potential that this is going somewhere too. So I think Courtney is saying it, it's not a number, it's a title for her. So once she gets out of that association and that dating phase, like now, like you're my man and I'm your girl, I think it's the title for her. Right, because I don't, I don't, in the future, I don't plan on to date without a reason. I'm not just dating. No, that, I don't talk without a purpose. I don't, no, I'm talking with the purpose right now. Like, so if that purpose is looking like it's being fulfilled on both ends to where, you know, he feels that way and I feel that way, then I would like to meet your kids. Of course, let me know about them beforehand. Let me know when we're getting to know each other what, you know, you got going on. But I don't think I would want to meet him to that point. Mine is, my number would be anywhere between four to six months because autumn i'm gonna do the most definitely like not within the first 90 days um because uh i know it's not a rule but it's like an unwritten rule that women usually have like not to have sex with the guy for like 90 days the first three months so if we just typically go with that i'm just gonna go extra month after that and then two more add two more months to it you know like okay now we are possibly physically together but now like it's a little bit more intimacy like we're not on a different level. Like I, I would say anywhere between four to six months, I want to meet your kids, yeah. like within that time frame. And then also that within that first 90 days, it lets me know whether or not if I even want to continue talking to you, because I'm not even just going to leave it, let you make the decision. Like it's my life. So like, I need to decide whether or not if I even want to continue even speaking with you. Yeah, and um, somebody brought up too, um, which I think is good, um, which is why I actually said it before, you know, if y'all want to come in on here and chime in, because I feel like we, I mean, all of us, well, not me, all of y'all are different. Um, right. But somebody, uh, Kay was just like, you know, probably need a, a single parent's perspective on like a timeline, which, you know, of course it could be different for- You're coming you know, up here, like, are you volunteering for next Sunday? Right, exactly. Um, yeah, yeah, it could be Yeah, heart and, uh, is that key? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Her um, key. Yeah. Um, yeah, it could be different for them. And somebody else said, um, the same guy, it. Ken Campbell, he said, just get a babysitter and, and enjoy and get to know the individual. I think that's the problem with people now dating. When you're dating, you're not just sitting, enjoying, talking about, oh, you know, what do you want to do in life and the good stuff. You have to really get to know the person. And sometimes thing. that encompasses getting, uncovering some of the challenges that they're dealing with you know, things that, you know, even though I think Kay mentioned it before, as well as us, about the whole therapy thing, there could be things that they're dealing with um, internally or that they have going on. So it's not just a matter of, you know, enjoying the person and then just seeing where things go. Like you really have to have serious conversations to see if this is a person that you want to date, you know, if you want to continue to be with, like, that's what, that's why I said, like, we need to, well, not we. Oh, no, no, no. we yeah yeah, about like like, these questions come up as i because i am dating like so i would i what what, going what you're saying aligning with what you say whitney i love to hear when a guy says "Mm, i never been asked that before okay give me a minute Mm -hmm. like i love that because like it's like some thought provoking like because i'm like i'm not here to play like i'm very competitive (laughs) like i'm not here to play because time like you can make money but you cannot get time back like so i need to know whether or not how how how, where is this gonna go like i'm letting you know like we're not doing no 
freaky dinky thing so i'm talking with a purpose so if you don't want that then i don't want to waste your time i damn sure don't want you wasting mine so i'm asking you all the questions like because people think it's funny when i say black men think it's funny because that's my preference and that's my business you know but black men think it's funny when i say when they say oh i'm divorced are you black people divorced or are you caucasian people divorced like i'm so serious Black people divorce. Black Jack. Okay, black people divorce is where she over here with her man, he over here with his woman, but legally, in the state of wherever they South Carolina and paperwork, there's yeah. no divorce. They're like they oh, just because exactly. they don't wear the ring, just because they ain't in the same house. You know, they still legally married. So if I was, you're dating me, and we've passed the three to four months now, you introduce me to my, your kids. I like you. I want to be with you. And now we're it went from the four to six. Now we're a year in. Like now I'm like, okay, I'm let's do this. Like, but do what? I just wasted my damn time. Cause you can't propose to me. You can't we can't get married. And if I get pregnant, which that's gonna happen. When if I get now we got an outside baby. Like, come yeah. on, like you, you gotta have those conversations. And let me Can grab something real quick because I wanna I wanna give the people a little, little gem. Hold on real quick. Okay. Yeah, and I do, I do have those conversations. Like, so when Ken said, that's why I wanted to go with that way. When Ken said what he said, I wanted to touch on it. I did not want to skip over that. Yes, I'm one of those women that interview. Sorry. Okay. So um, I know, you know, sometimes like when you're seriously dating, like sometimes people may not know what conversations to talk about. And I don't know about anybody else, but sometimes if I'm like, okay. I want to like talk about something else. I'm like, okay, what kind of questions can we talk about? Like what type of life things that we know? So anyway, um, I don't know if y'all follow the guy, um, Derek Jackson. I think he's like on Instagram. He probably has like a Facebook, a guy he's always talking about like stuff yeah. about women or anyway. So he has this game. The muscular guy, the black muscular that sits in a car. Yeah. Yeah. The must. Yeah. So yeah, so he has this thing. It's called mentally stimulate me. Mm -hmm. I don't know if y'all can see this thing right here, but this is the card game. And so this card game is it has a lot of different uh, questions on here with answer choices, and it helps you get to know like how the other person will respond in a certain type of situation. Like they'll say, for example, like you know your mom has the key to your place, and she comes over when we're you know on on a date at your house or something like that and she just comes in and starts you know making her way around the kitchen and doing whatever like is that okay for you like are you going to be fine with my mom yeah is my is your mom just gonna are you going to be fine with your mom just coming in there doing whatever or it's like you know after a relationship have you done it like you've done it with guys oh yeah i do it all the time so so let me ask you this so if so has it clearly it helped you because you're referring it to us so yeah. from from that does that help you like determine whether or not you want to go any further with the guy based off their answers from that are you like oh i want to dig a little bit deeper so how has it helped you like is it really a benefactor or is it just like a good like icebreaker yeah so um both so it's a great okay. icebreaker because like it helps like i feel like it just like loops because a lot of the questions it's a good mix like it's serious stuff like that but it's also questions like pancakes or waffles like which one you like pancakes or waffles pancakes. like <laughs> yeah so I think it definitely helps like it depends on like what topic it is like if it's okay. on a topic of like how like how close is too close for a relationship to your ex like you know we can hang out or I'm blocking that person like just depending on how they answer certain questions it's kind of like a mental note like hmm maybe that's something that I might want to you know keep track of or think about like as I'm getting to know this person like maybe they have trust issues like that can oh, yeah. be like something you pick up from that or you know gender roles like there it may say something in there like do you think you know women should do this or do that and like just depending on that it kind of gives you an idea of you know what their idea of dating may be or how do they think you fit into you know their life so it's just different things that different topics that'll come up that will kind of have you make a Milton note to kind of keep that in mind as you're getting to know the person more. But, I'm gonna yeah, order I, that game. Yeah, I like like that. it's like it's like three levels to this. This is like the friendly one. Like you can play this with a group too. Like you can play it with somebody you're trying to get to know, or you can play it with a group. 
But of course, you know, with all these card games, they got some more advanced stuff in here. So after you get past the stage of getting to know the person <laughs> and y'all are actually together, you know, they got, <laughs> they got some other stuff in there too. But, you know, this is like a starter. Like this is a yeah. great start for you to get to know. So I do suggest um, this because like I said, I use it all the time. Even if I'm not like seriously like dating a person or like trying to get to know them, like it is a good icebreaker just to see how they thinking. I Yeah, I Google because like I'm doing the virtual thing like hey you know over the phone and then you can graduate as a Ken back to Ken like the interview says like then I'll call you in for an interview like me talking to you over the phone is just a phone interview uh, but then like hey, if hold I want- on. Wait, a, wait a minute Ashley so you're saying you're doing virtual dating and y'all go on dates like 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 this I mean dating but like <laughs> I, I mean like, like talking. talking I mean yeah like, like talking. talking yeah like talking so oh, yeah okay. this is yeah, so I, it's dating pretty much because like if if it wasn't like with the COVID stuff, we would have been done linked up, you know. So yeah, right. of course, yeah, we do the virtual like this right here, you know. Um, and then if I'm feeling this first, it's a phone conversation, and then it goes to the well, let me see you, you know, because you know people can catfish people, you know, and so it's like well, let me oh, see God. you. And, no, people still doing that. Like I no, no, I just guys. saw, I saw. Oh, oh okay, okay, and so. And then so, um, and then after this right here, then after this virtual interview or dating, then it's the more, well, let me call you in for, uh, you know, and one thing I'm changing this year, 2021, is I'm going to your place. You're not coming over here. At first, I understand, like, it's the reason why women want them to come here so you can be, like, comfortable, you're in your own environment, you know, things like that. But M-A-S, and that ain't a card game men ain't <laughs> but anyway uh so i'm going to your place from here on out 2021 and if i can't come to your place after this virtual stuff then you got something going on you know and then i didn't waste my time i didn't waste three days or two months but anyway yeah somebody says you don't need a card <laughs> game to get to know somebody somebody says you don't need a card game to get to know somebody and that's true you don't need a card game but if you have in your mind that you're just going to get to know a person by just being around them, that's not going to be enough because you can be around a person your whole life. You can be around them for a long period of time and you won't know certain things about them unless you act, you have to ask thought provoking questions. You can't just be around somebody and talk about surface level things and expect you to get to know this person. No, you don't need a card game, but. If you're not going to use a car game, you, of course, yourself, think about what do you want out of a relationship? What are you looking for? And you ask right. those types of questions. So it's, it's being intentional about getting to know the person. No, you're not going to be dependent on a car game, but you want to be intentional when you're dating. You're not dating just to date or you're not dating just to go out and have a good time. It's not just fun and games when you're dating somebody. And I think that's where a lot of people mess up because you want it to be fun and games. And then when you actually just, go off of that to get into a relationship with somebody or if you start living with them then you start uncovering and seeing things that are red flags oh, and you're yes. like oh you know I didn't know this before and right. it's just like well if you would have asked this before or if you would have known that I had issues with my dad or I had issues with my mom and that's why I'm doing this or acting like this like you would know these things so it's not about using a card game it's you being intentional and dating and asking the right questions and really getting to know that person to know if that's something if that's somebody you want to deal with so can can um but i i was saying i was saying hi to my aunt kathy but also ken i think she was saying like the the card game is just like a catalyst to start those conversations maybe you don't necessarily need a card game that's you great yeah yeah. it's supposed to be fun and it's supposed to be thought-provoking it's just the catalyst for that i don't think that's like She's saying that you have to yeah, like every like not not saying everybody need to go get a game in order right. to get, <laughs> no, like, like for me like for me like I'm really not a talker like I'm really not a talker but if I get around somebody who is you know ask a lot of good questions or they have good vibes then I'm you know I'm gonna talk but as far as like initiating sometimes I'm just not that person so like I like it because it gives me other topics to go off of other than just things because I'll be thinking something then I'll read some of these questions I'm like oh I didn't even think to like maybe talk about that or that topic and I it's google. Google, kind of like, I, you li- like if you don't want to spend money on the game yeah you can google like questions to ask yeah. on a date or questions to ask a boyfriend mm-hmm. like like they're they're so like but this one question and I want to say this to like women because men say this do this a lot 
which is um always one of the questions that you need to ask is about their past relationship meaning that one that they just got out of and their previous ones and i know with my experience and then experience with my homegirls and stuff like they the guys always be like i don't want to talk about my past like i just want to move forward like no that is important you need to find out like why like why it, it didn't work so you can be on alert like make a mental note of like okay well so one of the questions that i always ask a guy is like give me two flaws about yourself you like give me something uh one flaw is like what your previous girlfriend or girlfriends said that they didn't like about you and that they wanted to change and then the second flaw is something that you know you personally need to change you know so i can already be like okay well and, and then when he tells me what she said or what he's personally working on I go ahead and give a person a timeline. I say, okay, well, you got like at least 30 days. You got 30 days where I can see like what it is that you want to do, you know, or seeing that you're working towards that, you know? So, I mean, you can, you can come up with anything, like really anything. But I think like with women, like we like thought provoking things. Like we already said in previous episodes, like how you, how you get my attention? Like you need to make me laugh. Like you need to be responsible handling your business. Like that, that's what, gets me you know but um um something something you just said Ashley like I kind of I kind of sort of just a little bit don't beat me down (laughs) disagree (laughs) disagree as far as um asking them about their previous relationship the reason why I say that is honestly anybody before this now this is just me this is my person my personal opinion Mm-hmm. anybody actually before us i believe is irrelevant and the reason why i say that is because they can tell you what happened in that relationship but you're only getting their side um you you really don't know the complete whole story because right. see, you can ask me about my last relationship but i could tell you what i want to tell you so instead of asking about that last relationship, don't like, I, now this is just what I have come to learn uh, as far as going through what I've been through. I don't ask if you tell, I mean, I'll hear you, I'll hear you or whatever the case may be, but I'm not going to ask you because I want to see for myself who you are. I don't want to compare to what you told me about the last one because it's going to be in the back of my head and it voluntarily or involuntarily is going to kind of be there um but eventually it's going to show who you really are so if you're coming to me as one person a a wolf can only be in the sheep clothing for for so long it gets too hot in there they it gets too cramped so they have to come out so i understand what you're saying however yeah so that's why doing like a job like you put down your you're applying for a a position with me you know Ashley's gonna tell me but you have to give me a resume of your past experiences so I can see if you're qualified for this position so that's how it is with me with dating me as well like like I'll say with my experience when I ask these questions and they tell me it's either like you said they can lie about it or whatever but it's usually one of two things or it's probably both with my experiences which is it's either what she did say let's say he was like um he was uh uh had low self-esteem or something you know and uh him for himself let's say he um he wanted a better employment and then in the course of dating and talking to this person within those three to uh one to three months i could see nine times out of ten you see both what she was saying and what he was saying like he still ain't applied for new jobs He's still working the same jobs that he, you know, delivery jobs or whatever, not making no money, but complaining about the light bill going up and his rent going up. And I'm like, so you don't want to change careers or, you know, and then also as far as like what she was saying, like him having low self-esteem, like him being insecure, like he's, uh, can I get the, um, the, your password to your social media? No, you cannot. Next. No. So, I mean, but to each his own, you know, but, um, Let's wrap this question up. I, I think, honestly, <laughs> I think we can only get the two questions tonight because this was amazing. What time is it? It oh, uh, nine fifty three. Yeah, what? yeah, yeah. It's um. Oh. But I was gonna we, say, did you want to do one more? But 
That's a no, I can't. I can't because I I got a I got two 10 o'clock appointments and somebody ain't gonna make it. But oh, um Lord. right. Um but you know, hopefully it leads to something. But, but uh okay, yeah. so or we can do like another episode, like a bonus episode this week. What it is? Part two, part two, part two. Yeah, part two. Part two. Yeah. yeah. So y'all let me know what days y'all available, you know. Oh, oh, Ashley, let's do a part two. And since we've been getting like so many feed, so, they so need much to come feedback on. from people in the comments, especially like one of these guys that's on here that wants to like voice their opinion, even if they, I don't know if, if since we're on Zoom though, I don't think we can do like somebody can come on okay this is the thing you guys the guys that have been commenting you have three options that the the chime in if you don't feel comfortable like doing live like how we're doing now you don't have to do that that's one option or you can come on on zoom and just have your picture up here a good picture you know or you can actually call in on your phone. Like you can just be like how you're typing right now. You can actually call in so your picture won't be up here. Um, I'll, you know, edit out your number or whatever, but we'll just be able to hear your voice. But of course we would love to have you up here physically. Yeah, I think it would be really good to have like a guy's perspective on here because like I said before, it's just us women talking. So it would be good to hear a guy's perspective on how you feel about certain things, which I mean, we'd be getting a lot of people um, I mean, Marie, I want you up here. Marie, I want you up here. Uh, Brittany, I want you up here. Patrice, I want you. I, I want all y'all women up here because we all going through the same thing, believe it or not. Like, share your Yeah. You know. So we're doing a part two this week, right? Yes. Just let me know what date is good for you guys. I can tell y'all now my schedule is clear. <laughs> good. Like, as long as it's like 8 30 and beyond, I'm good. So pretty much another day and I'm there. All right. So just inbox me. So we're gonna wrap this up. So the two questions that we did, what we were able to cover was uh can a black man be loved correctly without having financial stability? Clearly, clearly. Yes, the answer is yes. Um, and the second question was um if you was dating a, a guy, but um would his kid our kids uh plural, would that would you would you leave the relationship if they had like bad ass kids or like that? But um, I think so. What were y'all answers? <laughs> what was, what, answer was it? Yes said, or no? If I can't get along with his kids, I would leave the relationship. Okay. On your own, like, would you like ghost him, or would you actually like sit down and have a conversation? Him. I would let him know exactly why I don't think it's gonna work it out, but I wouldn't okay. ghost him. So Whitney, you gonna Wait, have what? a conversation? Like, um. The kids, that the kids question. Oh, yeah. Like, so you would leave? Yeah. I, no, no, I wouldn't leave. I think, like I said before, I think it's just a conversation that would need to be had. Because, I mean, you don't just, boom, I don't like the kids, and boom, that's it. But, you know. Okay. Um, I, 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 yeah, I'm not going to go ahead. Okay. <laughs> no, I was going to say, it's a, I think it's a difference if the mate doesn't like the kids or if the kids doesn't like the mate. Because I feel like you're going to be more silent, like, well, dang, if the person... If my kid don't like the person for whatever reason, you're gonna kind of like be more serious looking into it. Like, why they don't like this person that I'm bringing around? So, yeah, that's all I want to say. Okay, so Kista, uh, Miss Kiki, you love the kids, and the kids love you, so you ain't got to answer the question. All right, so uh, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. You know the kids love you. Go ahead. Well, <laughs> I can say I've never really had a problem. I know you're a good if, person. Uh, if Me, I do, I'm still working on it somebody's kids i really never did have a problem but um other than that my mine would be the 50 50 that i told you about is is rather if you know if i know they just acting not or not i i would stay but like courtney said if we just can't get along and they acting crazy and hair don't want to do nothing about it i gotta go yeah and i just want to add on you gotta think this is coming from somebody who doesn't want kids at all so if i'm willing to yeah do that up. if I can't get along with them that'll probably make me want to leave anyway because I don't want to <laughs> a person so. with kids feel the same way it ain't just That's that true. you don't have kids I mean well, I, I am a single parent I just didn't birth any but I am a single <laughs> parent. 
Well, I like I, I like to call myself a um a stay at home cousin. A, you know, um, like you know how you have stay at home moms, but I was a stay at home cousin or whatever. But um, my answer to the question is, uh, I think I get along with kids pretty well. So um, I would just, if anything, like I'll probably come into the situation being like, have you guys had therapy before? Like I'm a big advocate on that. So um, and then I would just like get them like take them for ice cream or something like, well, hey, what's what's going on? Like write out your feelings. I'll get them a journal. Like I, I just feel like I know the steps of how to do things. But after I exhaust all those steps and like they're still like a demon child, then I'm just like <laughs> sprinkling like some Dasani on them. You know, like I got to get out of here. But uh, speaking of getting oh out God. of here. Well, I mean, before, no, I was going to say, so the guy, Ken Campbell, who knows him? I don't. Who Facebook friend is that? I don't know. Is this an intruder? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but I, I, opinion. I, I yeah, know. he's, yeah, so when we do this part two, um, Ken, you yeah. gotta come. I don't know who, who Facebook friend are you? Like, how did you get in tune? Like, what happened? Like, I want to, yeah, like, I want yeah, to interview you. Like, is, inbox is it me. public? Is, is the live? Yeah, it's public, yeah. But typically, it's from because of our friends. Like, yeah. our, like who's on our page? Yeah. Oh, he might be my friend. I don't know. <laughs> I know. I have friends since, like, 20, 2000. But I was just going to say, I was just going to say, because we really do need another, I mean, need a guy. So, you know, since we just had, you know, a lot of feedback and stuff, then I was just. Him and Mr. J. Davis. I have a guy that I want to get on here, but he be acting funny, so. I don't know why guys <laughs> don't want to come up here, but all right, you, all right. Maybe so, if you have two or something. Yeah, we, we need that. We need that panel because uh, y'all, that's what I said. Like, this is about us, Black women who have our thoughts and opinions on certain topics that deal with y'all most definitely. Like, come up here and defend yourself or, or enlighten us. Like, teach us something. Like, we're telling you what we're going through, what we're thinking, how we're feeling. So come up here and like, come for us and be like it's okay everybody <laughs> like you say individually like all men ain't shit well then come on up here and show us you know but uh we'll i'll announce it i'll post it i'll tag everybody this will be the same people up here but um hopefully we have some additional guests you know um but thanks for tuning in thank you whitney for coming i look forward to the part two and maybe more when you yes. have time, <laughs> uh, made a big impression tonight. And then, as always, love you, Courtney. Love you, Kiki. Yes, love y'all. And, so, and uh, I will love see you guys, you guys in the inbox. Bye. Bye. <laughs>